Welcome to the Mechanical PE Exam Prep Podcast, the podcast where I give mechanical engineers like you the tools and motivation to get your professional engineering license and take your career to the next level. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the all important and sometimes counterintuitive topic of motivation. And this is something that's come up for a lot of candidates that I've worked with, and it certainly came up for me as I went through my study journey. Motivation actually works in a cycle, and that's something we're going to talk extensively about in this episode. What is that motivation cycle? I originally got the idea for this episode from another podcast. I was listening to Andrew Huberman, and he talks about this motivation cycle, and he was speaking about it from more of a scientific perspective and going into a lot of the detail there for any goal or project or major endeavor that somebody's embarking on. So this is not limited to the PE exam. But as I was listening to it, I was thinking about how applicable it is for those of us that have um, gone through the process of studying for the PE. It's uncanny how well it fits, and uh, I think you'll see that as we kind of talk through. So I want you to imagine starting off what it's like, and regardless of where you are in the process, maybe you've already experienced some or all of this, and maybe this is something that you're just trying to get ahead of. But in either case, Imagine that feeling when you're just starting to consider and get serious about going for your PE. It's an exciting feeling. And you find yourself dreaming about your future career and possible job opportunities, not necessarily changing jobs, but maybe just getting different projects where you already work or having bigger opportunities. You start researching the application process. How does it work in your state? Maybe you start asking colleagues what it was like when they went through the process, what was their journey like? And you start scouring the web for what are the best study resources out there? What am I going to use? And you start imagining yourself going through it. And it's interesting because all of this happens before you're really fully committed to the process. It's almost a fantasy. It's not necessarily real yet. But you're doing all these things. You're taking all these steps. And you may not really be sure if it's the right time in your career or in your life to take something like this on. You might be worried that the process could be too complicated. You might be concerned about having to ask your references to endorse you. How are those conversations going to go? And you might find yourself in a position where you have some things that are pushing you toward doing it and some things that are pushing you away from doing it. But in the end, If you find yourself compelled to take on the challenge in spite of these obstacles, these potential obstacles, then that's motivation. Motivation is simply your reasons for acting. If your reasons are stronger than what could stand in the way, then the feeling that you feel is motivation. That's all it is. And motivation builds gradually until it becomes a powerful, almost irresistible urge to move forward. And I sense this when I talk to aspiring professional engineers. This is something that, they're, that they've passed the point of thinking about doing and that they're sure that they want to do. And this emotion, this motivation, is not to be wasted. It's something that you have to act on. And so that's what takes you from these kind of thoughts in your head and you know, researching things online and actually puts you into action. Now you're telling friends and family and colleagues that you're going to become a professional engineer. You're putting your credibility and your words into the world for others to hear, and that's when it becomes real. And you start the application process. You actually select the exam that you're going to take, and you go ahead and you get the books or the courses that you plan to study with, and you dive in start studying. Now I want you to imagine it's four weeks later, and it might be three weeks, it might be six weeks, but somewhere along the line, usually about a month after you start, you're slumped over your computer desk, you're looking over your work from some really hard question that you've been staring at for 45 minutes and swirling around, and maybe it's the first day that you've actually studied in a week because you've had unexpected commitments come up at home or at work, and Suffice it to say, the study process is not going well, certainly not as well as you'd hoped, as well as you'd envisioned in that early stage where you were feeling super motivated. You're fully aware at this point that you're falling behind. You're starting to wonder if the whole PE thing was a bad idea. And even on days that go well, the process feels slow and painfully boring. 
it's hard at this stage to imagine going for another three months. You're only a month in, you kind of set out that you were gonna spend four months doing this. You're still pretty far away from the finish line and your confidence is taking a big hit. It's hard to imagine showing up and doing this again and again in time for your exam. So what happened? How did we go from being so motivated at the start to being so frustrated a month later? Where did all that enthusiasm go? Well, I think the first and most important thing to recognize is that you're not alone. This is a natural cycle. This is the motivation slump, and it's experienced by many PE candidates just like you and lots of other people that are pursuing a whole host of different goals and challenges that have nothing to do with engineering. It's just a natural cycle. We tend to get excited and focused at the beginning, and then we get frustrated in the middle, and then, fortunately, we get re-energized at the end. And there's a tendency for folks to think, well, my experience is different. You know, I, I don't work on this, I work on that, or I didn't study this, or I've been out of school for a long time, I, or I already tried to do the exam and it didn't work out. So, you know, my experience is somehow different. And I've spoken to loads of engineers, and now we've had a few on the podcast already, from all different walks of life. And it's true that everyone's exam experience is different. But when it comes to this motivation cycle, it's one of the common threads that really ties folks together. They have this initial enthusiasm, this slump in the middle, and then this re-energization at the end. And I can definitely speak to this. I studied for about six months, but there was definitely a period of time. It might've been a little later than a month for me, but it was probably around the two or three month mark where I was pretty deep into it and had been going at it for a while. And I had a lot of other things on my mind. I was traveling for work. I was working on the most challenging project that I'd ever worked on in my career at that point. And I was also training for an Ironman triathlon. So I was getting up early and my sleep probably wasn't great. It was just a lot all at once. And it just piled up on me little by little. And I really felt that, that motivation slump. I'm like, wow, I'm still really far from the finish line. I've got a lot more work to do. I've got to keep up what I'm doing just to have a chance for another several months. And it just didn't seem like something that, I mean, I knew I could do it, but I really didn't want to do it. It's like, it's like I felt like I had to do it. It felt like a burden. It wasn't fun at that point. At the beginning, it was a fun idea. At that point, it was no longer fun. So what can we do about this knowing that it's going to happen? Well, I have three ideas. And the first one is probably the most important thing. So if you only take away one thing from this entire episode, it's this. Expect the motivation slump. Just the fact that you're aware of this phenomenon that we're describing actually helps. So first and foremost, the most important thing to head off this loss in motivation is to be aware of this phenomenon in the first place. The act of studying is genuinely hard. It means we're trying to learn something that we don't already know by definition. So when you're losing motivation, when you're already struggling, it makes for this uphill battle. And that's that feeling that I described where it's like, I don't know if I'm gonna get there. Okay, I believe that I can do it, but I just don't feel like I wanna do it. But if you expect that the cumulative effect of studying day after day is going to take its toll, then you'll be a lot less surprised and more patient understanding with yourself when the going gets rough, because it will. And you'll have predicted that it would get as hard as it is and then you'll feel like the work you're doing is part of your path to success rather than an unplanned detour. You'll actually believe that, no, this is the path. I'm exactly where I need to be. I knew this moment would come, and the fact that it now has is a signal that I'm on my way, but I've got to push through. So that's the first and most important thing. Expect the slump. The second tactic is to constrain your study window. And this is a little bit against some advice that I've given in the past, so there's probably a happy medium here. But I usually tell folks to spend about four to six months studying for the PE exam. And the reason why I do that is I wanna be conservative. I don't necessarily wanna tell folks to rush, and I appreciate that it takes a little bit of time to hit the ground running, so it's not like day one of your studying you're gonna be going at full tilt. It might take a week or two just to build a study ritual. And sometimes things come up in the middle 
where you have um, travel for work or you have something going on personally and you might lose a couple weeks or you might hit this motivation slump that we're talking about and procrastinate for a couple weeks and lose time that way. It happens. So that's why I normally say four to six months because I want to be conservative. But there may be a good case, and I've seen this with a number of candidates that I've worked with more recently, for keeping the window on the shorter side of this range, so more on the four-month end and potentially as little as 90 days. And the rationale for this, it's not for everyone because it's pretty intense, but it might be easier to push ourselves when the finish line is in sight. So when we plan on a three-month study schedule, we're pulling that finish line forward so it's easier to see. It's kind of like the difference between racing a 5K versus a marathon. You know it's shorter so you can run faster. And you know, six months might be too long to be pushing. It's hard to think about six months in the future. It's almost like future you. You know, you're going to be a different person. It's a long time from now. But one quarter of a year seems like it's sustainable. You can work really hard for three months. It's a long time, but it's not forever. And, you know, as long as you have the right program and you're able to hit the ground running and keep going, and you don't get stuck for too long, then it's over before you know it. It's over before the seasons even change. So when engineers come to me and they say, hey, I know you recommend four to six months. Can I do it in three? I sort of tell them, actually, it might be better to do it in three, but you have to hit the ground running. You have to know the motivation slump is coming and you cannot succumb to that. You got to keep going and um, you got to make sure that there's no other schedule risk out there for you. So is it a good time in your life, in your career where you don't expect something to kind of Come, come out of nowhere and just cost you several weeks out of that three-month period because when you constrain it, every week becomes precious. And the third and final tactic, and this should be no surprise, this is something that's tried and true advice I talk about in a lot of different podcasts and episodes. You want to establish a study streak. So one of the most effective methods for maintaining motivation throughout the entire study process is to establish a study habit and then keep that streak. Now, sometimes your streak will get broken. That happens. It's okay. What I say in those cases is just don't miss two in a row, right? You missed yesterday. You were sick. You were tired. You weren't motivated. You had things come up at work. Okay, let's just not make it two in a row. Let's get right back on it. Don't beat yourself up about missing one. Don't try to make it up, right? Don't try to spend two hours today because you missed an hour yesterday. Just get right back on and get back to your plan. There's enough uh, slack in the plan that if these uh, misses happen, and it's not too often, that extra work will get absorbed somewhere else. Now, on the other side, because some folks like to uh, kind of get greedy, if you are feeling good one day, maybe you want to do a little bit more, maybe you want to go from one hour to two because you have the time and it's going well, I'm all for that. I'm supportive of that. But I don't want you to overdo it in any one day. I certainly don't want you to get in the routine of forcing yourself to study for three, four hours on a regular basis. Because at that point, you may not be getting enough rest. And I don't just mean sleep, like recovery. You need to do other things. And it starts to hamper your ability, or not necessarily your ability, but your desire to continue the next day because it was such a strain to do it today. So the thing to remind yourself of here is that the connections that you're making when you're studying aren't only happening when you're studying. They're actually happening subconsciously inside your brain when you're not paying attention between sessions. So the approach of doing an hour a day or an hour and a half, whatever the case may be, is allowing enough time in between those sessions for little connections to be made. And that's how you're going to build up and compound the cumulative effect of studying day after day after day and making progress without wearing yourself down. So what is this about rebounding at the end? We know we're going to start out with a lot of enthusiasm. We're going to kind of draw on that energy. It's going to naturally reduce. It's just a force of nature. But we're going to keep working and stick with the streak in spite of that. And then at some point, somewhere around two to four weeks before your exam date, you'll likely notice that your motivation is increasing again. And it might surprise you because you would think if you're tired at the halfway point, you're going to be even more tired when you're three quarters of the way through. But actually, it kind of flips and starts to go the other way. And there's two primary reasons for this. The first is when you create that streak and you stick with it, let's say you've been studying for 10 weeks and you've been consistent throughout, you've proven to yourself that you're willing and able to show up most days to do the work that's necessary to move you toward your goal of passing the PE exam. And you have by now, by that point, 
successfully convinced yourself that through that action that you will get it done. So that's very persuasive. It's just like what you've recently done is what you're going to continue to do and you start to believe in the process. You've actually covered a lot of material too and you're starting to feel like, wow, this is revisiting my entire undergraduate curriculum and more and you're starting to feel those skills. It's a, it's a competency, it feels good. And the second reason that we get a rebound in motivation is that the deadline now is the exam, which should be scheduled by this point. This deadline is well within sight. And so your focus and your conviction are growing. You can handle the pressure of your exam date knowing that there's rest and recovery waiting on the other side. So I wanna encourage you to ride this wave of motivation through the final stages of studying. Also knowing that that's coming can be helpful when you're in the middle stage. You don't have to think about the finish line being this thing that's two months away. Maybe it's only four weeks away before you're gonna kind of get that emotional boost. And even think about at this stage, making additional room in your days to accommodate the final preparation and um, some increased urgency because this is something important that you're up to, you wanna do it right. And anything you can do now to make yourself more prepared is gonna make exam day that much easier and more comfortable and you're gonna be feeling confident. The only suggestion I would make there, and you may have heard me say this in the past, is that I want you to stop <laughs> and rest about 24 to 48 hours before your exam. Try to get two good nights sleep before the exam because there's little value in cramming right before. So while I do want you to step on the gas in that final two to four weeks, I want you to then step off of it completely with a day or two in advance of your exam date. It's much more important to have all your mental faculties with you on the big day. So in summary, the best ways to deal with the motivation cycle, specifically the slump that comes in the middle of it, is to have a plan for it at the start, expect it, know it's coming, and be ready for it, to strategically constrain your study window, and lastly, to maintain a study streak. If you're someone who's struggled with motivation and you wanna share your story, I'd love to hear from you or read any comments that you'd like to share about your PE experience thus far or if it's in the past. Either way, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for listening to the Mechanical PE Exam Prep Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review to help other engineers find the podcast. And if you're looking for a program that will help you pass the PE exam, check out the full access bundle available at mechanicalpeexamprep.com and feel free to reach out with any questions. I would be honored to be your guide on the journey to becoming a professional engineer.